Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Leonardo da Vinci knew some stuff, didn't he? And he knew that slogans, or as we politicians put it, sound bites, matter. Without the help of people who know how to express the core qualities of a service, product, or plan in straightforward yet captivating language, we are sunk. No wonder Henry Ford opined, stopping advertising to save money is like stopping your watch to save time. Thank you, Stephen. It's very heartening to see that advertising has such an enthusiastic champion and one who's done his research, so thank you very much. And it is a great pleasure to be here and a very welcome chance to speak to the advertising industry. So today, I'd like to share my thoughts on why you are so special, outline some of the ways I believe you will be key to the UK's post-Brexit success, and reassert the government's support for advertising. <coughs> UK advertising is the best in the world. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It has attracted some of the finest artistic talent around, such as the film director Ridley Scott and the comedy producer John Lloyd. The best adverts are not only a means to an end, but works of art in their own right. I loved, as a teenager, the classy black and white Guinness adverts, and I'm also a huge fan of the hilarious Specsaver ads. Advertising is right there at the intersection of creativity and commerce, and as such, one of the most fascinating industries around. And advertising special status does not end there. Culture, media, sport, tourism, digital technology, heritage, the National Citizen Service, and everything else my department does is reliant upon and interacts very closely with advertising. You are one of our major success stories. The UK has the biggest ad spend in Europe, and our advertising expert, uh, exports are worth billions annually. Deloitte's has found that the £20 billion spent on UK advertising in 2015 generated around £120 billion in GDP. That's 6.4% of the overall economy. It's the real thing, and it's reassuringly expensive. There can be no question, then, advertising is central to a successful United Kingdom. You are a key player in your own right, but of course, you are also a champion for other industries, every other industry, and act as a catalyst for the creation of new ones. New models for the consumption of television, film and music would, like the internet itself, be unsustainable without advertising and would never have come into being without it. And you will also be a major player in post-Brexit Britain. UK advertising has a well-deserved reputation for being outward-facing, innovative and high quality. The UK balance of payments for advertising-related services is second only to the USA and five times that of France, Germany, and Italy ex import much more advertising than they export. Go compare. The government is seeking a new and equal partnership with Europe and repositioning this country as a truly global Britain. And you can help sell this country to the rest of the world. Of course, you do so already through the Great Campaign by drawing attention to our amazing film and music sectors, and indeed by promoting all our goods and services. And I want to be clear that the government has never seen you as peripheral to our plans for success. You are right there at the centre, and I want to hear from you. But why should you make the time? Well, because you're worth it. Our plan for Britain will be driven by some basic principles. We will provide as much certainty and clarity as we can at every stage. 
and we, we will take our exit from the EU as an opportunity to make Britain stronger and fairer, getting the right deal abroad while ensuring a better deal for ordinary working people here at home. Our aim is to forge new relationships around the globe while remaining open to international talent. Now, I'm conscious that UK advertising feels that certain aspects of EU-wide cooperation have been helpful, but also that certain legislation is harmful. So I want to hear your views on the implications and the opportunities that Brexit presents as we approach our negotiations. And as we engage in negotiations with the EU, the advertising industry can help us make the case by providing us with data and knowledge. I want to make use of your myriad skills as well. You know how to sell anything. And so I am certain that we can sell a product as fantastic as the United Kingdom. After all, when you've got it, flaunt it. If you are to take one thing away from what I say today, please let it be that the government is four square behind the advertising industry. Credos, the advertising industry think tank, has found that there is a £5 billion gap between what people are willing to pay and the true cost of advertising funded media they receive. I am very conscious of that as we look at things like internet advertising filters. Inevitably, an industry that is so woven into the fabric of the whole economy is particularly vulnerable during times of economic difficulty and uncertainty will make businesses reluctant to invest. And a fall in ad spend was one of the first indicators of the last recession. So it is quite right that the creative industries are highlighted in the government's green paper, Building Our Industrial Strategy, which was published earlier this week. The industrial strategy's overarching aim is to enable us to identify all of the opportunities throughout our economy so that businesses can grow, create more jobs and spread economic success right across the country. The purpose of the Green Paper is not to lay down the law, but rather to start a conversation. Before the consultation closes on the 17th of April, I am very eager for you to help us make the case for the creative industries in general and advertising in particular. The government has been clear that business is best place to identify what companies needs, need and has issued an open door challenge to industry to come forward with proposals to transform their sectors. Because it's good to talk. This industry already has a tremendous advocate in the Advertising Association. And this is not an old-fashioned picking winners industrial strategy. Instead, sector deals will be open for both established and emerging industries, and the government will work with any sector that can organise behind strong leadership. This leaves your industry, which has a long history of doing just that, in a very strong position. Impossible is nothing. Sector deals with government can be struck when an industry can demonstrate a strategy to transform their prospects. This could include such matters as helping to align policies on training and skills, addressing regulatory issues, helping to identify market barriers, and promoting the creation and spread of new technologies. Moreover, there is a specific focus on creative industries in the Green Paper. Sir Peter Bazalgett is conducting an independent sector review, which will focus on three key themes, utilising new technologies, <coughs> capitalising on intellectual property rights, and growing talent pipelines. I and I look forward to working with all of you and Sir Peter, or I think as we all know him, Baz, the review will complement rather than replace the sector's efforts such as the Creative Industries Council's work programme. Ably led by Nicola Mendelssohn, the council has already produced extremely useful material on intellectual property and talent pipelines. 
You are likewise well placed to prosper thanks to your determination to explore cutting edge technologies such as virtual reality and augmented reality. And once again, where the advertising industry leads, others will follow. I wanted to say a word about the gambling review. I know that the fact we are looking at the advertising of gambling concerns some of you. But this is something about which people feel very strongly. I receive a lot of correspondence on this matter, and it is something that is regularly raised with me as a constituency MP. So it would be irresponsible not to explore those concerns. And that is why we are carefully considering the responses to our genuinely open call to evidence. We aim to publish our findings in the spring. In conclusion then, UK advertising is something about which we can all be very proud. More than that, it is one of the industries that most makes me optimistic about this country's prospects. And this government will be backing the advertising industry as we make a success of Brexit. So tell Sid. In fact, tell everybody. Just do it. Thank you. Karen, thank you very much indeed. That was a, a terrific speech, a fantastic overview, I think, of the relationship that we've had. It's something that's really struck me as a newcomer to this role, uh, how close the dialogue is between government uh, and, and the advertising industry. Um, we deal, very, obviously, very closely with DCMS, but also I've been in meetings with DEXU, the Department for Exiting the EU, Department of International Trade, uh, and Business, Energy uh, and Industrial Strategy. So there's four departments that are very, very engaged with our business. And... What I've sensed from all those meetings is the desire to work in partnership, and I think that was very much reflected in the speech. I do also think, uh, and I was last involved through the IPA about 12 years ago in, in the relationship between advertising and, uh, and government, we have come so far. It's unrecognisable, I think, the relationship now. And I think that's being recognised as being a key part of the creative industries too. And I think that's been really important and reflected today. There's some terrific work going on, and we have another meeting week after next about Brexit. And a meeting on Monday about gambling uh, with Tracy Crouch uh, to look at the review happening there. So there's a really close dialogue. Um, Karen has agreed to take a couple of questions. I'm conscious of time. I'm looking at my watch, and we've got about three minutes before we have to be out of the door. So first question uh, that's come through to us that we want to put through to you is there's been a lot of talk about talent. Our business absolutely depends on overseas talent. About 20-25% of the employment in our industry uh, is overseas talent. Very, very strongly uh, uh, oriented towards the EU. We've heard other industries talk about special visa arrangements for their industry. If we were going to talk about a special visa arrangement for the advertising industry, how do you think government might react to that? Well, thank you, Stephen. And, and, I, and I think, you know, let's reflect first of all on what the Prime Minister said in her speech last week, which is that we must continue to attract the brightest and best, um, but there must be control. Now, the advertising industry is a sector that has experience of talent from across the world. And what I want to hear from you is where there is good experience and where it's not so good. Because when we're negotiating the, the controls that we will have with EU migrants and others, it is good to know where it works really well and where you found problems. So I, I encourage you to feed in through DCMS and through the other departments in government for those, those examples you can cite of where this works really, really well and where it doesn't. And that will help us in our negotiations to get the very best deal because we do want to attract the very best talent. We do want to make sure you have that pipeline at home and from overseas where you need it. Thank you very much. And one of the things we'll be doing this year is doing a survey of employment across our industry, across the UK, so that we can map out where those jobs are and particularly look at the, the, the dependence on overseas talent. So we'll have a lot more information on that subject later on. Now, the other big... I mean, it's been a, yet another momentous political week. It's like every week seems to tap the previous, uh, top the previous one. Um, obviously, today, Theresa May is in Philadelphia. Tomorrow, she's meeting President Trump. Uh, who'd have thought we'd have been saying that? But that's happening tomorrow. Um, a lot of the people here in the room work for US-owned companies. Uh, the US has been a huge inward investor into our industry, as many other industries. And they've chosen to invest, I think, partly because they see us as a gateway to Europe. Uh, when Theresa May is talking to Donald Trump tomorrow about US investment and closer relationships, 
How do you think, uh, what do you think she could say, or what do you think she could achieve to ensure that we continue to get that investment and continue to be the US's gateway into Europe? Okay, well, I mean, I'll start by just making the obvious point that it's very good that the first world leader that uh, President Trump is meeting is a woman. I think that is extremely good news. Yeah. Um, I also think that the Prime Minister is absolutely determined that we will get the very best deal we can, both a free trade arrangements with the US, but with our European partners too. So I think, uh, you know, the message she will be giving is that Britain is open for business. This was uh, a decision by the British people to be global and outward looking. And she will be absolutely determined to make that message to him that she will get the very best deal she can with the European Union in order that we can keep that special uh, situation we have of being English speaking in the right time zone, uh, a close special relationship with the US, but a great gateway to Europe. Great. Thank you very much. You. Well, I know we're dead on nine o'clock, which we Thank promised <laughs> that we'd finish at nine o'clock to did. get you away. So please give Karen a huge round of applause. Thank you very much for coming to this. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Yeah,